brainwave drawing is drawing out from the mind, uh, from the very place and perception of, of thought and, uh, and, and, I, and ideas. It's getting to the very kernel before thought becomes experience. So it plays sculpturally with space and time and being and thought and the process of thought. I think it's a kind of an imprinting. One became sort of imprinted and began to, to converge with the other. And I can understand that, actually, from a brain science point of view, in terms of, of what might be happening there. Um, however, their brains weren't coming together. It's just their behavioral states were shifting together. On the left here is a computer screen, and these will show the, your brain waves separately. The person in the left seat, Ezra, you're in red. And Rio, in the right seat, uh, your squiggly line is the green. Mm -hmm. When those are combined together, the left makes a horizontal motion on the, the squiggly line, and mm -hmm. the right makes a vertical, and the combination makes the somewhat circular squiggle there on the screen. Mm -hmm. The computer screen is then duplicated over on the video screen that's overlaid on your faces. If you say, okay, try and make this into a circle, then you're giving them a task, and they're doing biofeedback because they're they're looking at the screen and they're and they're telling their brain what to do to make it control it. If they're just trying to create an interesting configuration or to work together to create something uh, visual, then it can be considered perhaps as art. The brain, sort of in a sense, making an abstract electrophysiological art. The consideration of your brain waves creating abstract art, involuntary creation of abstract art. I mean, where does that exist anywhere in art history? What is the meaning that we take from that experience? To me, the, the visual medium almost, and the whole picture created between the two people's thoughts almost helps to just keep the um, participant in focus. You're not getting a canvas, you know, printout or a giant paper of, uh, of the picture that you're creating, but what you are getting is, uh, is an incredibly um, dynamic experience. This is a reprise of a piece that we did in the 70s. In those days there were no computers and it was all analog stuff. We borrowed equipment from hospitals and put it all together and set it up in a museum environment. Nina was looking for uh, how do we get the uh, social aspect of a couple of people uh, to create an image and uh, two people painting with a, a brush is one thing but that's really two separate things when so we were looking at the, how do we do that with the technology and so we said well brain waves that's no, no hands and uh, so how do you do that? Well, we had to go out and borrow some equipment. It didn't exist in the uh, commercial marketplace like that. So basically Nina had the ideas and I would said, okay, what technology can we use to uh, put that together? It stems from the work that I did at Cornell where I um, observed people interacting with my with my works, with my sculptures, in ways that ultimately deconstructed them. And what fascinated me was how they interacted with the work, how they brought people with them uh, who hadn't seen it, who, and they told people how they experienced it. And what I realized was that I was very interested in behavioral process of works, of creating something, putting it out uh, for the public, and having them react in, and interact with it, and observing that interaction, and having that interaction be a part of the work itself. <laughs>